I guess there are people still coming in. Uh, shall we start? Great. Um, so, uh, people sitting out here, uh, how many of you uh, like uh, fast websites? Could you just raise your hands? I still pe see people not raising their hands. I'm dead sure you do not not like fast websites, but of course, yeah. So, um, you know, uh, there's a reason why your websites are fast when it comes to WordPress. I mean, we're going to be talking about, uh, you've already seen the topic, it's uh, democratizing performance uh, by Pascal. And uh, just a little bit about our next speaker. Pascal has been a part of the community and the core team member for a long, long time. And his main focus is to, you know, focus on the aspect of performance of uh, the CMS called WordPress that we all love. So I'd like to call on stage Pascal Birchler and take over the stage. So a huge round of applause for Pascal, please. Thank you. Hey everyone, I'm really excited to be here today to talk about democratizing performance. First, I want to explain... Oh, it doesn't switch. Can you... I mean, we can just look at my face for like half an hour. So. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> so anyway, so in the beginning, I just want to clarify um, what it even means to democratize performance, uh, because that question or that term gets confused a little bit, especially for not native uh, English speakers. So it's not a, about politics or anything. So it just means uh, making something accessible to everyone. And in my eyes, everyone should be able to have a fast website. No, it doesn't seem to be working because... Yeah, now it seems better. All right. Yay! So, um, democratizing performance is, of course, a reference to the mission statement of WordPress, which is to democratize publishing. Uh, WordPress believes that great software should work with minimum setup and uh, work out of the box, and people can use it. Yeah, people can use it out of the box. Uh, or in the words of WordPress co-founder Matt Mullenweg, uh, we take things that used to require advanced technical, technical knowledge and make it accessible to everyone. So uh, just as WordPress democratizes publishing, it can play a significant role in making um, performance accessible to everyone, regardless of their skills or technical knowledge. Not everyone knows how to code or manage a server. Still, they should be able to have a fast website with fast interactions. But why does that matter? Um, well, performance is essentially for user experience. If your site is slow, visitors might leave and not come back. Or your ads might load too slowly and you lose revenue. Um, or if uh, your site is slow to interact with, maybe people don't buy the product in your online store, so you lose money. And performance is increasingly important for search engines as well as it becomes a ranking factor, so it can really affect your online presence and your traffic. Uh, throughout this talk, when I'm usually referring to performance on the front end, um, I do so by referring to core web vitals. Um, web vitals is an initiative by Google uh, to provide guidance for quality signals that are essential for a good user experience on the web. They cover areas such as loading performance, layout stability, and interacti interaction responsiveness. While Core Web Vitals are still relatively young, performance is not a new invention, of course, and WordPress has always kept an eye on performance to a certain degree. However, the complexity of websites um, has evolved over the years, and so have expectations. It was not so long ago when the community started caring more deeply. A few, a few years ago, a new uh, core performance team was, was formed to focus specifically on performance. The WordPress core performance team is dedicated to monitoring, enhancing, and promoting performance in, in both WordPress core and its ecosystem. The team's activities can be roughly grouped into three categories or pillars. One is improving core itself, providing new APIs, fixing slow code, 
in measuring improvements. Second, we're working with the ecosystem to help people adopt best practices and make their websites faster. And third is providing tools and documentation to facilitate doing so. So as you can see, tackling performance in an open source project like WordPress involves more than just improving the core software itself because there's like thousands of plugins and themes involved. This is actually a fact that I would like to uh, emphasize a bit more. So to democratize performance is not something that WordPress or the core performance team can do alone. So whether you're building WordPress sites for friends or family, or you're making a living um, by building themes or plugins, it takes all of us to elevate performance and to raise the bar for everyone. Still, there are of course some things that we can do in WordPress core itself. So let's take a closer look at some of the performance improvements in WordPress um, WordPress core to give you a better idea of what it means. And even though the core performance team is still relatively young, young, there's already a proven track record of performance improvements in the last few years. Many of these improvements were implemented thanks to more advanced testing measurements, um, which helped identify areas with poor performance. This in turn facilitated uh, per improvements to image lazy loading over the span of multiple releases. Um, WordPress has gotten much better at uh, detecting like the high priority images. Uh, the third example here is a, perhaps a bit uh, more unusual or unexpected. So ever since WordPress uh, added support for emojis like 10 years ago, it added a little bit of JavaScript on every page to detect whether your browser supports the latest versions of emoji because there's always new emoji coming out. Uh, so it turns out doing this on the main thread and on every page load is quite wasteful. So what we did in a recent release is we do this only once um, when you visit the page first and we cache the result and we do so uh, in a separate thread. This change was a main contributing factor to a 30% client-side performance improvement in WordPress 6.3 compared to WordPress 6.2. And to benefit from this, all you had to do was update your website. And I think that's a great example of democratizing performance. You may wonder how such a change can be measured. Uh, how do you know whether uh, changes were successful? And how do you know what to work on next? There are usually two ways to do this. One, you set up a controlled WordPress site, like a WordPress site in a controlled environment somewhere. You make a change, and then you measure uh, the performance like before and after the change. This is so-called lab testing or lab data. Lab testing is a very powerful tool as it allows you to keep track of performance on an ongoing basis. And that's why we added automated performance testing in WordPress core so we can ensure that we are, aren't regressing in any area. And for each major release, we do like a detailed in-depth um, in performance analysis as well. And collecting all this data really helps facilitate um, decision-making based on performance metrics. So because we finally have like numbers to tell whether a change is actually good for performance or not. And when it comes to measuring success, uh, the more important ac aspect actually is seeing how WordPress is doing uh, for actual users out there. Uh, for example, when we want to find out whether this emoji improvement uh, made WordPress faster, we need to measure how the millions of WordPress sites out there uh, in the world are performing for their actual visitors. Um, you can't do that with lab testing, um, so how do you do that instead? This kind of information is available for free through open source data sets such as HTTP Archive and the Chrome UX report. The former is useful to see which technologies a website is using, like which plugins and themes. And the latter is the official data set of the Web Vitals program, so all user-centric core Web Vitals uh, are represented there. And this is the so-called field data. Combining the two data sets provides a more accurate picture of WordPress performance in the wild or in the field. At the end of last year, we looked at this field data to see how we are doing, and the results were very, very positive. Uh, looking at the millions of WordPress websites from the Chrome UX report, Core Web Vitals passing rate improved by over 8%. 
see, seeing such an improvement at scale across this huge amount of sites is quite a significant boost. All right, so these were some recent examples of how we have been improving WordPress performance and measuring such changes. Now I want to share some of the upcoming changes that we're focusing on this year and uh, some of the changes that you should be aware of. The first one I'm uh, particularly proud about because I've been working on it for a long time myself. Uh, it turns out that loading translations in WordPress is very, very slow. Uh, lab data showed that loading translations in WordPress could even make it like up to 30% slower. And considering that more than half of all WordPress websites around the world are not using the default English language but are translated, that's a huge disadvantage. So to fix this, we completely rebuilt how translations work in WordPress um, to make them faster and more lightweight. Here on the left side in blue, you can see the typical load time of a uh, regular WordPress site. And in the middle is the same site, but with translations loaded. As you can see, the load time is much higher. And on the right side in yellow is the new system that we built, which has a much improved load time. And there's barely any difference to a site without translations. Thanks to the performance translations, translated WordPress sites will automatically be faster. Um, this is actually shipping um, later this month in WordPress 6.5. So all you have to do is update WordPress, and uh, if you have a translated WordPress site, it will be automatically faster. Another big focus this year is interactivity performance, which is about ensuring that any interaction with visitors, uh, of visitors on your website are as fast and smooth as possible. What we're doing now is identifying key areas uh, and opportunities to improve uh, interaction bottle interactivity bottlenecks in WordPress. Here's an example of such an interaction issue where the UI is not responding right away when you try to click on the accordion. This is an, this is an area that actually affects more like the ecosystem um, side of things, so it's more about uh, which themes and plugins that you're using that affect the interaction issues. Still, there are some things that we can do in WordPress to help make that better. And of course, this responsiveness can be measured, and this can be done using a new core web vital metric called interaction to next paint or INP for short. So it's a new core web vital that is um, becoming stable actually next week. Uh, if you want to learn more about it, my colleague Adam here is uh, talking about it tomorrow morning at this work camp. While INP uh, is of course an ecosystem problem, again, there's ways for core uh, to do uh, improvements and provide tools and guardrails for, for developers. Uh, one aspect to do this is the new interactivity API in WordPress 6.5. The interactiv interactivity API powers things like um, image lightbox functionality in, in the image block or pagination uh, without full page reloads. And if we can get plugins and themes to adopt this new API, we can ensure fast, um, fast and responsive interactions. And uh, maybe hopefully we can get rid of jQuery as well. Images are a bit of a recurring topic when it comes to WordPress performance. Uh, you know, the usage of uh, images on the web has steadily increased over the years, and usually images get bigger and bigger. And in the past, we have done some work to ensure that WordPress uh, properly supports the WebP image format, which allows for much smaller file sizes. And now we did the same for AVIF as well. So AVIF is a new uh, image format which helps make images even smaller. So starting with WordPress 6.5, WordPress natively supports AVIF images. A problem with these new formats is that older servers often don't support these formats. And uh, uploading images is also a very compute uh, intensive task. So especially if you're a shared on a shared hosting environment, uploading images can take a long time. To solve this problem, we are looking into the bringing the whole media processing from the server to the browser. So that what it means is uh, you could optimize your images and convert them to WebP or AVIF right in the browser, uh, right in the editor, even if your server doesn't actually support it. Uh, yay, it works. Uh, so in its simplest form, 
Uh, this would allow you to optimize existing images in your editor with the click of a button. And this would happen all in the browser without requiring any uh, server power or plugin. Um, and such client-side image optimization not only helps reduce file size and improve performance, but it's also a much better for user experience because the uploads will be much uh, faster because all the processing happens on your device. It can happen in parallel. Uh, it's much smoother experience. Another personal favorite of mine uh, is the work to add support for speculative pre-rendering for near instant page loads. So what that means is, so this is a new browser API called Speculation Rules, and it allows you to preload the next pages in the background. Uh, for example, on a news website on the home page, you could automatically instruct, uh, you could instruct the browser to automatically uh, preload the first, like the headline article. So then when the user clicks on the article, it will load instantly. Um, you could even do that more dynamically, for example, in an online store, um, when you hover over a product, you can preload the product page in the background. So when you click on it, the product will be instantly there. Uh, this is currently supported in uh, Chrome and Edge, and there's a WordPress plugin to try it out. And we hope to bring this to WordPress core eventually with the browser support uh, increases. And I think this uh, API is a good example of how WordPress is embracing the web platform. Um, luckily for us, the web is constantly evolving, and our job is to review such new APIs in the web and see if they're a good fit for WordPress and how we can implement these APIs in WordPress to make it easier for plugin and theme developers to make use of them and uh, build fast experiences. All right, so these are just a few examples of the things that we're working on in WordPress core to help improve performance. Um, if you want to learn more about what's in store, go check out the core performance team's roadmap for this year. As I said earlier, uh, it takes all of us to help democratize performance in WordPress, and it is mainly an ecosystem effort. After all, there's this ecosystem of thousands of themes and plugins and millions of users affected. And just for WordPress core itself, there are multiple ways to help elevate the ecosystem. Uh, let me give you a few examples of what we can do in this regard, or what we are doing right now. First, we really like talking about performance. Uh, we want to let everyone know about the latest and greatest developments in performance and everything that's happening in the space. This includes things like standing on this stage right now and talking about performance at WordCamp Asia. Or sometimes, we also reach out to developers individually, for example, by opening issues or pull requests. And what we can also do is we look at data from Chrome UX support or HTTP archive, and we can see uh, plugins that are commonly used on slower websites. So we can go to these plugin developers directly and see if there's any anything that we can do to improve performance there. Of course, this is all accompanied by the right documentation. Uh, it's important to provide to provide developers with the necessary knowledge um, to, about WordPress performance from implementing best practices to measuring changes throughout uh, the development cycle. This is not just re relevant for the plugin and theme developers, but also the people like assembling the sites. It could be a freelancer or an agency. Uh, you really need to know and you know, learn and understand performance best practices in order to be able to apply them to your project. Uh, one example, uh, we recently published uh, a blog post, an article about how to set up end-to-end -end performance testing in WordPress using Playwright. So it's basically the same principle that we use in WordPress core for doing the lab testing uh, for performance, like ongoing performance tests. Uh, same thing just for plugin and theme developers. Um, so this way developers can do the same thing for their projects as well. And of course, everyone can write such documentation and I really encourage you, if you have any tips or tricks and want to share your knowledge, please do so. Um, the WordPress community can only benefit from this. In addition to documentation, we also provide tools 
tools for developers and end users alike. Uh, such tools allow for a more hands-on approach to identify and tackle certain performance problems. Uh, one such tool is the Performance Lab plugin, which allows you to test upcoming uh, performance improvements before they actually land in WordPress core. Uh, so not all of the features I've shown you before uh, land in WordPress right away. So first, we add them to a Performance Lab to incubate them uh, and test them. And um, this way, we can get it, them into the hands of users right away. And we can iterate on them. And if the feature works, we can propose merging into WordPress core. Sometimes it turns out it doesn't work so well, so we could even discard it if necessary. And Performance Lab is built in a modular way, so you can just install the modules that you like and apply it to your website. And because over 100,000 sites use the plugin already, this in turn gives us valuable field data to see how sites using Performance Lab perform in the wild. So this really helps us validate ideas at larger scale before they reach WordPress core and we can really iterate, iterate on them more quickly. Another plugin we help uh, develop and promote is Plugin Check. Uh, plugin Check check helps to ensure that your plugin follows various best practices um, and requirements, not just for uh, submitting your plugin to the plugin directory, but also well beyond that. And so it's actually a joint collaboration, collaboration with the plugin review team um, as it's recommended to use it when first submitting a plugin to the repository. However, plugin check actually remains useful even after that, and we recommend you to use it uh, consistently and continuously for your uh, plugin because it also includes checks for things like security, accessibility, and of course, performance. Using Plugin Check is a very convenient tool because it's just another plugin that you install on your development site. So while you are working on your plugin, um, Plugin Check is right there for you to con constantly uh, run the checks against your plugin. Um, but this can be made even more convenient. And uh, we really want to meet developers where they are. And many WordPress developers are using GitHub for hosting their source code. For this reason, we built a very easy to use GitHub action that runs plugin check against your plugin. Uh, it just requires a few lines of configuration, and every time you make a code change, we run plugin check. And if there's any reported issues, you will see them right away in line in your source code. Similarly, we want to make it very easy for you to measure your success as well. So we developed a GitHub action that automatically installs your theme or plugin on a fresh WordPress site and runs performance tests every time you make a code change. So instead of reading that blog post I mentioned, you can just add a few lines of configuration and you instantly have performance testing set up. Um, and once the results are collected by the GitHub action, you're presented with a nice overview of all the results. And if there's any regressions or improvements to a previous run, you will see them in line uh, in that table as well. So that really makes it super easy for you to stay on top of performance metrics for your plugin or theme. And if you need something more custom, you can always go back to the blog post and uh, customize the setup to your needs. All right. So. So far, I've talked about things the WordPress core performance team is doing to improve performance for everyone. This includes code changes, um, feature development, bug fixes, documentation, tooling. Uh, I've also shown you a little bit of the upcoming things in WordPress 6.5 and beyond, um, all the things that we're working on. But what if we go further than that? What if we dream a bit bigger? So in this section, I want to briefly touch on some loose ideas um, and things that we could do to even uh, make things even better for developers. If we take the tooling aspect to the next level, there's a lot of potential to better help developers make the right decision when it comes to performance. For instance, when your browser dev tools uh, tell you about some slow JavaScript on your page, why can't it tell you 
how to fix this JavaScript in the context of WordPress. Um, many developers also use tools like Query Monitor to uh, ensure there's no bugs and anything. These tools could also show you performance-related issues. As I mentioned at the beginning, um, even if you're not a very tech-savvy user, you should be able to have a fast WordPress website. And of course, no one uses WordPress without any plugins or themes. There are always uh, you know, at least a few plugins on a website. And when it comes to installing one, you can choose from many different options. But which one is better, or which one is faster, you simply don't know. Um, that's, uh, uh, that's where we could step in and inform users about which solution might be better for performance. Um, turns out there actually are some solutions for this already. So there are tools, um, there are browser extensions, which basically test all the plugins in the entire WordPress plugin directory. And if they have any errors or um, compatibility issues with the latest WordPress version, you'll see that information in the plugin directory. They also measure things like memory usage um, and also, of course, the performance impact on both the front end and the back end. So you can see exactly the plugin's impact on a site. Uh, Here's a little bit zoomed in. Um, so from a user perspective, I think this is a really useful um, feature. There's nothing more annoying than installing a plugin uh, and seeing that it doesn't work properly, just throws errors, or makes your website super slow. So from a performance standpoint, this is great for user experience. And you don't have to worry about these headaches anymore when you can see this information up front. So while these tests are currently available through some browser extension uh, and the tests are performed by some other platform, there's actually the infrastructure in place uh, already on WordPress.org to do this ourselves. So there's this project called Tide, uh, which was built exactly for this purpose. Uh, it is a series of automated tests that run against every plugin and also the theme um, on WordPress.org and provides the results via an API. Uh, unfortunately, the project has stalled quite a bit since it was uh, since its inception like six years ago. But what if we would bring it back? I think they would really go a long way. All right, so this wouldn't be a conference talk in 2024 without mentioning AI. Uh, you know, it's the hot topic. Uh, it can be used for many different things. So why not use AI for improving WordPress performance? Imagine an AI assistant in your WordPress admin that tells you how to optimize your site's configuration. For example, how to uh, improve the configuration of your caching plugin. Or an assistant in your code editor having deep knowledge of the WordPress uh, APIs and telling you how to load your plugin's JavaScript or CSS in a more performant way. You don't have to be an expert in performance to benefit from such helpers, making it possible for everyone to have a fast website. And this kind of tooling would definitely help lower the barrier for improving performance. All right, so in this talk, I have covered many af different aspects of democratizing performance so far. Let me try to summarize them in a few words. First and foremost, the core performance team's uh, role is to enhance and improve uh, performance in both WordPress core and the surrounding ecosystem. This includes building new features or APIs, but also documenting uh, best practices and providing tools for developers um, to understand, measure, and address performance issues. And when it comes to measuring, it is important to not just look at the lab data, but also the field data. Uh, with our approach on improving WordPress performance, we lower the barrier for everyone to have a fast website. For me personally, I think the best outcome of this talk is that all of you care more deeply out about performance and go check out all the things that the WordPress core performance team is doing. If you're excited about what's lying ahead, I encourage you to go check out uh, tools such as Plugin Check or Performance Lab. And definitely check out this year's roadmap that I've shown before for the WordPress core performance team this year. Or even better, get involved with the performance team yourself and help make the web a better and faster place. Together, we can democratize performance.
Thank you very much. Thank you, Pascal. Thank you so much. Uh, um, I'll have a question for you. I, I do have a question for you. When did you uh, realize that you know performance is what you wanted to focus on? Um, probably a long. Well, performance was also always a bit uh, on my mind, but when I saw uh, the perform the core performance team getting uh, formed and like taking shape. Uh, that really caught my interest and wanted to help out because there's a huge potential and it's a big, uh, still unsolved problem and there's still a lot of work to do. Sure, sure. Uh, guys, any other questions that you have for Pascal? Yeah, please. Uh, can we have the mic, please? Hey, so I'm Nav. Uh, I manage uh, Smash and Hummingbird, by the way. Uh, it's very interesting talk. Thanks for thanks for all the uh, sharing that you did. Um, I'm curious, what, where do you see all the performance plugins um, going, um, or where would you rather like them to uh, focus on going forward? Uh, great question. Um, so there's quite a few performance plugins quite a few big ones. Uh, in my eyes, they have tons of configuration options. Uh, they can be quite a bit overwhelming for users um, because they can affect things that you don't uh, see immediately on a page. Um, I think there's a huge potential in making things simpler, have like more um, opinionated configurations. And again, if there's like an assistant that can tell you how to optimize your configuration, that's even more helpful. Um, because otherwise it's really too overwhelming, so there's a lot of potential to simplify things. Uh, any other questions, guys? Uh, we had a question from there, I guess. Um, anybody else who'd like to ask a question? Yeah, <laughs> sure, please. <laughs> of course. Uh, hi, Pascal. A big fan of your work. Um, that's not ironic. I actually am. Um, you mentioned the prefetching uh, stuff uh, that's there. Um, has there been any thought on the kind of survey impacts of that? I know that we have seen with frameworks like Next.js, which do prefetching, it massively increases the number of HTTP requests that actually hit the server. Um, I haven't actually seen that uh, prefetching before. Could you tell us a bit more about uh, that? Uh, sure, yeah, so uh, you probably haven't seen it because it's brand new, so it just landed in Chrome, uh, Chrome in process very recently. At, uh, API is actually very uh, flexible, so it's up to you as the developer to tell the browser what to prefetch and what not uh, to prefetch or pre-render. And uh, the browser also tries to uh, apply some heuristics to not overwhelm the server as well. Um, so I think it's just a matter of configuration um, to make um, yeah, the changes that apply to your stack so you don't you know, um, overwhelm the server. All right, guys. Uh, any other question that we have? Sure, please. Why do I sense there's some ironic stuff going on out here? Uh, it may be ironic. Great. Um, I, I guess it's a question I, I have for you. I could ask you offline as well, but um, do you feel that people should just rely on the performance team to make performance better and wait until it gets better? Or everyone has a responsibility, um, whatever they are doing in WordPress, whether it's site owners installing plugins or developers building plugins. Do you feel it's a shared mission or the performance team will do it on its own? Oh, it's absolutely a shared mission. Uh, we can't fix performance by ourselves. Um, because no matter what we do in in core itself, if there's like a bad plugin or theme, like a bad actor on the side that that could destroy all that hard work in theory because it's like a badly written plugin. Um, so it's really up to all the plugin developers, um, theme developers, but also like the people actually assembling the sites, um, whether that be like a freelancer or, or an agency. So they have a role to play as well. Uh, I don't think it would be uh, on the user themselves uh, to you know uh, fix the performance because the average user might not 
have the technical knowledge to understand this. So it's really for uh, all the other parties involved to, to help address the performance. Great. Ooh, yeah, another one. Please. I am a very small fan of your work. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, so my question is, you implement a lot of these things in core. Um, what are some examples of things that appeared to have a lot of promise that didn't really pan out and you decided to get rid of it? And are there ever cases where, you know, we don't come up with an, a, a second attempt of that and it's just a concept that we scrap and throw away? Um, I think so far there probably hasn't been anything that didn't like fully work. But uh, one example was that maybe wasn't ready for prime tide yet was um, uh, converting all images in WordPress to WebP by default. Because it turns out WebP is great, but if you download a WebP image and can't use it in, uh, like, I don't know, Outlook or Photoshop or, I don't know, in other program, if it doesn't work, like, that's bad for user experience too. Not necessarily the user experience of the site owner, but the visitor. Um, but there are also places where, um, or features that might not necessarily be a good fit for, for WordPress core itself, that might. Uh, the plugin territory, we have a lot of ideas on, um, for example, using, um, and it's currently in the works, so using the data from the, the front end to inform the server about uh, which is the uh, prominent image on the website so we can prioritize uh, that image in the browser. It's a bit complicated to, to build and set up, and we have to see whether that's actually something that um, works in core or not. Great. Uh, we have time for one question. If there are any. One more. Maybe like a medium fan of my work. Yeah, anybody <laughs> medium fan? <laughs> <laughs> I guess after the talk, I mean, lots of them are going to be great fans. But yeah, thank <laughs> you so much, Pascal. And a huge round of applause for them. Thank you. And yeah, a little token of appreciation from our end. Oh, wow. Oh wow, thank you very much. Ooh. Thank you so much. Ooh, Thanks, exciting. Pascal. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, thank everyone. You.